Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to a new tutorial. Um, thank you for joining me. It has been a while. Um, I've had a very busy two weeks. I had a wedding and a communion. I was the best man. I do speech and all sorts of things. So it was very exciting, a very exciting two weeks. Um, so I'm back. I have time for a tutorial at last. Now, in this tutorial this week, I am going to show you about color mixing and how I mix different kinds of greens, how I mix different kinds of blues, uh, browns. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you some color mixing on my canvas pad paper, okay? Um, how I mix different shades of colors. And when that's finished, I'm going to paint a nice birch tree. Little scene I have here because I remember I promised one of you I would paint a birch tree to show you my take on it so that's what i'm going to do i'll do some color mixing to show you how i mix colors um different tones different hues that type of thing and then when that's finished we'll take this off put a nice canvas up there and paint a nice birch tree scene kind of a snowy kind of a scene with a lovely birch tree coming up so that's the plan we'll see how it goes yes um so that's it let's have a bit of fun with this uh, thank you all again on patreon thank you very much for your support it really is really really appreciated um it's great knowing that i'm helping someone and that they're giving back you know that they they appreciate what i'm doing so that's that's great and thank you all for that so um let's have some fun with this don't go anywhere right so color mixing um i have a basic palette here and i'll just run through my colors with you i have titanium white naples yellow cadmium yellow cadmium red I have burnt umber, burnt sienna, tailor blue. Um, if you prefer to use French ultramarine, that's fine. I just prefer this because it's more of an earthy kind of a blue. And lamp black, or ivory black, black. They're both very similar. So just give you a good idea. We have a nice range of colors here. You can mix a lot of different blues with this. And these are the colors that I would use for all my paintings. So if we start off and let's say you want a nice pale green for a mountain or a tree off in the distance or a row of hedges or something like that let's try mix a green for that now i'm just going to dampen my brush very slightly just very very slightly um just to help the paint kind of break up you know and let's try some tailor so some tailor blue and that's very rich isn't it now there's two ways you can do this to get a pale green you could use cadmium yellow and then some white or you could use naples yellow with some white i prefer to use naples because it's more creamy and it's not as vibrant as the cadmium so taylor blue or french ultramarine with some naples yellow and you can see now right away we have a lovely soft earthy pale kind of a bluey green for off in the distance see that now you could then if you want to brighten this or lighten it just add little bits of white just a little bit of white and keep going until you get the desired color so this now is a nice color for hills off in the distance or trees now let's try this there isn't that nice so that's a nice distant kind of a green now you can keep adding white and white to that and adding more yellow and it'll give you a paler color as you go okay so you can experiment with those and then if we add more naples to it it becomes more slightly more greener okay so you can see now how these three colors give us lovely cool and warm greens for a very very distant landscape and then you could add white to this color and you'll end up with a pale version of that color so they're nice cool greens aren't they do you agree very nice cool greens now if you want to go the opposite way let's in fact let's just try i'll just give me brush a quick clean here and i'll just dip it in the tops rub it on our tissue and let's try the cadmium yellow for a change so let's take some tailor blue just a little let's try some cadmium yellow 
and look what that does that gives us a very rich green doesn't it so a very very close up green for a tree which is right in front of you now you can add naples yellow to that and that will soften it so it takes the bite out of the color see let's try this so that now is a much warmer green isn't it but you could push that back just by adding more blue or you can make it richer by adding yellow now what if we add some white let's take some white let's try this and this now becomes a lovely kind of an emerald green doesn't it you see the difference so although it's still warm it's still kind of a pale color for a distant tree isn't it and you can add more and more white to that to make it paler and paler and paler so you can see now how these two yellows react completely different with the same blue tailor blue and you can practice all of this at home and you can really get to work on greens using different greens so we have a cool blue and a warm blue and just with those three colors or four colors if you include white um isn't that amazing now these are kind of soft earthy greens that you can use um for a landscape if there's a lot of depth in a landscape um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch to some richer greens and believe it or not you can make a green out of black so black and yellow and brown and yellow so let's ignore blue let's just put blue out of the picture completely and let's take a touch of black okay little bit of light ivory black or lamp black they're both pretty much the same um some cadmium yellow now look at this very rich earthy kind of a green that we have and let's put this on now look at this so this is a very dark rich green isn't it so you could add more cadmium yellow to that and it makes it richer again that's a nice green isn't it so i use this green then for my close-up trees and for close-up grass that type of thing so just yellow and black that's a big difference isn't it and of course you could add little touches of blue into this as well depending on what kind of a contrast you want um so let's let's now try brown so let's take some burnt umber and then let's take some cadmium yellow and this gives us a very uh, warm autumn kind of a green doesn't it you see it's a brownish kind of a green a muddy green we'll call it does that sound about right a muddy green so that's a nice muddy green you could add little touches of red into this to make it more autumn kind of a green um you could add a touch of naples yellow into this to make an even paler earthy kind of it's more of a brown isn't it but there's a hint of a green in it can you see that um so you can see now just by using a few different colors we can get all these different greens and by adding white into those we get even lighter shades don't we isn't that amazing so you could um if you took some burnt umber with some yellow and then take a touch of blue you then start getting a very rich autumn green don't you and it's a case of just trying trying different mixes to see which one works for you that's all it is um so that's a nice selection of greens now isn't it for a landscape now you could just add some yellow into this one make a nice rich green okay now let me get more yellow on my palette so cadmium yellow and naples yellow they both react very differently with different colors so let's take some cadmium yellow with some white on its own and that's a very bright yellowy green isn't it and if we take now i'll clean my brush in between all of this if we take some let's try some burnt sienna 
with some yellow and then we could take a touch of a touch of blue let's see what happens so then it starts getting into a kind of a muddy green again doesn't it see so born cyana and born umber are very good for creating awesome colors um, you could take some yellow and a touch of red that gives us an orange so that's a lovely lovely autumn color again and then a touch of blue would make it green and that's an, another vibrant kind of a green isn't it and then just lighten it by adding either naples yellow or white whichever one you prefer so that's one on greens okay nice simple from light right down to rich rich dark greens um you can do the same with browns you can do the same with reds um you can do the same with blues let's try some grays because gray is a lovely color to work with it's a lovely color for a middle tone um in any landscape in fact i would use a lot of gray in a landscape and then I'd build my darks and my lights on top of that if you know what i mean so let's try a couple of greys here. Um, the easiest way to make grey is by taking a touch of black with a touch of white. And that's pretty much a simple grey, isn't it? Now that black I use is ivory black, just so you know. And you can see it's more of a cool black, isn't it? So mixed with white you can see we have a very cool kind of a grey, don't we? It's not warm. It's not very cold, it's a lovely middle ground kind of a grey. Um, and then you could add touches of Naples yellow to that. That will warm the grey slightly. So you can see it's warming the grey. Um, great for skies, for clouds, that type of thing. And you just keep adding more and more white as you please and it gets very light then doesn't it so a nice light grey that's a nice grey to work with for a lot of subjects now if you want to do um, make it slightly cooler basically just add little touches of blue to it so let's go in now make a nice grey here okay middle grey again black and white and if you notice I haven't cleaned my brush really well so there's actually little touches of bluey green on this brush still only small tiny touches just on, up at the very tip of the brush not the tip the very end where all the bulk is and this will add tiny bits of color into my mixing to help bring all the colors together so the tiny bit of blue on this now could go into this gray and would complement these blues lovely so we have a nice middle grey here let's take a touch of blue in this and it becomes a cold kind of a grey doesn't it so you can do all of this with just a few colours And it's amazing how much different shades of colour you can mix with just three or four colours, it really is. So that's a nice cool or cold kind of a grey. Now you could keep going and adding little touches of tailor blue. And if you find it's going a bit on the green side, take a touch of red. And that'll pull it back from the green to the warm kind of a grey tone that you want. Okay, so you have a nice selection of greys now, you could do a lot with those greys, and we only used three colours. And you could keep going, and you could add some black with some brown, with a touch of blue. Um, let's try that. Let's take some black, some white, a touch of burnt umber, and this will give us a warm, browny kind of a grey then. Look at that. 
Also, if you only have Payne's grey, that's absolutely fine as well. You can do a lot with Payne's grey. It's pretty much the same as black mixed with white. So we have a rich dark grey now, you see. If we keep adding burnt umber to that, we end up with a nice kind of a brownie grey. Again, great for shadows on clouds, um, skies, very dark atmospheric paintings. So you can see a lovely selection of colours just from the handful that we have here. And that's really only the beginning. You could mix lots of different um, shades of these colours together again. So when mixed with white, you could mix the opposite colour with white to that and you could just have an endless amount of colours. Now let's try some purples. So I have another sheet here. Let me just move this out of the way. Let's try some warm purples and cool purples. Okay, again, I'm cleaning my brush. Same brush all the time. Let's take some white with some blue. Okay, and let's take a touch of red. So that's a nice kind of a mauve colour, isn't it? There we go. Now let's take a touch more red with that. So we'll start off with this particular shade now. There we go. Let's take a nice warm kind of... A, that's a nice warm plum colour now, would you agree? Okay. Then we could add more blue to that. So blue and plenty of red. That gives us a nice rich, a rich blue, doesn't it? And if we add more, keep adding red to this. You can see now we have a nice rich plummy color. And you could go as so far as to add white to these. You see? And that gives you lovely different shades of blues. And there's more blue in this one. So if we add more red to the mix and just concentrate on the warm tones. Now let me just dampen my brush because it's fairly dry. And we can concentrate on warm colours, warm kind of mauves, and just keep keep adding then to this um, more and more white, and more and more red even, and then you start going into the pinky colours. See? So we have, and um, you could even pass that off as a grey. A nice warm grey as well. Couldn't you? Isn't that lovely? So we end up with some nice pinks and purples and mauves and all sorts of tones thrown in there. And because we have pink in here, we could add a touch of Naples yellow to that. And what that would do then is... Now let me just get some Naples yellow because I've run out of Naples yellow. Um, where is it? Gone again, let's. Gone again. Oh yeah, there it is. So, if we take some Naples yellow into that pink, so what we'll do is mix, let's mix the pink first, right? Let's take red and some white, and then into that let's add some Naples yellow. And because it's a creamy, pale yellow, it'll warm it up lovely. So now, look at this. And these are all lovely complementary colours now. And you could keep adding more and more yellow as you go with some white. And you can see that red just warms it up, doesn't it? So we have some lovely blues and pinks in this palette. So that's how I mix my blues and pinks. Um, adding white as well. If you find it too strong, just add a little white. And that's a lovely colour. These colours are lovely for the top of clouds um, where the sun is hitting the cloud. And so you could use that for the top and perhaps this 
for the bottom of the cloud so you can see how these colours would complement each other in the sky wouldn't they? wouldn't they look well? so that's that's a little bit of advice on colour mixing um, you could go on and on, you could be, I could be doing this for hours hours and hours and hours because we didn't even get into our blacks yet so you could add black to these to make really dark colours so if I for instance take some Taylor blue with some black right and take a touch of white with that that's a very dark cold bluey kind of a grey there now isn't it but then you could just take a bit of red to warm that up and you can see it beginning to warm already just with that little touch of cadmium red So remember, to warm it up, just add a little touch of cadmium red. That's all you have to do. And it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. So there we go. Some lovely colour mixes for you to look at. And all this with just a few little colours and you could paint a lovely landscape now with just those colours there isn't that amazing so uh, these nice warm greens for close up trees close up um, close up fields that type of thing cool greens for distant mountains with trees on them or distant trees off in the distance little hedges and stuff like that um, Nice cool and warm greys for a sky or even perhaps the seascape and some nice warm greys um, for a sky also and just for a landscape in general. So um, really nice complementing colours. So most of these will be complemented lovely with these greys. So those and those together would look very very well. In fact I'll swing it around for you so you can see how they all complement each other it's because they're nice soft earthy colours um, very difficult to go wrong with these types of colours in fact a lot of these colours would complement each other um, so that's it I hope you enjoyed some of that I hope you got some advice on what types of colours to use just remember I, I just always use white to knock it back and to take the, the, the richness out of a colour little tiny tiny dab of white or naples yellow perhaps um, bear in mind if you're using naples yellow with blues they will start to go green slightly green like these kind of greens here so anything with naples yellow will make it slightly greeny just remember that so it's a fine line between using naples yellow and white basically and look it comes with practice uh, I've learnt this over years and years I've just kind of mess messed around with my own colours to find the right ones for me you might not necessarily like these types of colors and you could practice with your own colors at home um, but this is this is my palette here this is what I would paint with so um, I just love these soft kind of pastel earthy colors I just love using these kind of colors and um, you know we're all different but do try don't be afraid to try Okay, as you can see on your screen here, we have a lovely birch tree. And um, believe it or not, when I was mixing all of those colours, just on those paper pads there, I used only one blue, and that was Taylor blue. So you could have a choice if you had cobalt blue, French ultramarine. You have a choice of endless colours, just with one or two blues, reds, browns, that type of thing. So you don't necessarily have to have a huge palette full of 15 colours um, in fact I don't buy greens in a tube I just prefer to mix them with yellow and blue it's, it's much much easier um, so look we're going to do a nice soft landscape here and we'll practice some birch trees see if we can get some nice ones on the canvas I'm using a board it's 14 by 10 so a nice kind of a wide board 
and I'm going to be doing some nice cool greys on this. Nice and cool. Nothing too rich. Um, you know, I suppose you could call them pastel kind of colours again. So, I have my stubby green brush that everybody keeps talking about. And they are just regular, simple, synthetic brushes. See? Very, 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 very soft. Uh, this one is very worn. I have this now about, God, I'd say about a year now. And you can see the way it has a chiseled kind of an edge because it's worn so much. And it's perfect for trees. Perfect. This one is a little less worn. But again, perfect for grass and foliage, that type of thing. So these are the only brushes kind of I use for my, all my big work. So I'm going to start with this. And you can see that we have a nice pale background, so a soft blue right across. Let's make a nice soft blue. Now, you could use Taylor Blue for this. It might be a bit rich. Let's try it and see. So I'm dipping my, let me show you here, turpentine, just a tiny, tiny drop of turpentine. And this is actually dirty, but it doesn't matter. That's, that's my turpentine now from the colour mixing. If you can see... I don't wash brushes in turpentine like that. I just dip it in, I wet the brush, and then I dry it on my tissue. See? Soak off all the paint. And that's it then. I, I regard that as a clean brush. So that's all I do when I'm cleaning my brush. Um, right. In fact, you know what I will do? I will add some clean turp turpentine into that just to make it a little clean, because I want to keep these colours nice and clean. I don't want to go muddy with them. So just a tiny, tiny drop of turpentine into my bowl, and you can see that there. Okay, it's not spotless, but it doesn't have to be. Now, damp brush. It's only damp. It's not soaking, um, but it's not completely dry either. I'm going to make a nice soft blue for that. Let's take a touch of Thalo, you can see that's a very rich blue, isn't it? Some white into that. And my aim here now is to have a nice creamy colour. So like a tin cream out of a tub, when you empty out a tub of cream, that kind of consistency. So it's not completely thick paint, but it's not watery either. Now that's more or less just paint on its own. So I'm gonna just dip my brush just the corner, just one or two hairs, into my turpentine, okay? Just very quickly, just to help that flow around a little bit better, okay? And that's probably fine now, I reckon. Let's try it. That's still a bit blue for me. Again, I wanna keep it cool. So let's take some more white. You know what I will take? I'll take a touch of black. Just the tiniest, tiniest little touch. And that's kind of cooled it down a little bit now, hasn't it? By the way, I have two coats of primer on my canvas. Um, two coats of regular primer. Now, it's a homemade primer that I make myself. And I'll explain to you how I make it. So, listen carefully. I use normal white household undercoat paint. It's a water-based paint. Uh, you'll buy it in any DIY shop for painting doors, that type of thing, skirting boards. Um, any cheap white undercoat paint will do fine. Uh, if, if it's acrylic based, even better. So I just use normal white undercoat, and then I add to that, say, so if I had a half a tin of white undercoat, I'd add an extra third of PVA glue. And I know you're thinking PVA glue? I mean, look, you find it inside the kids' section in a craft shop. Any news agents or craft store would sell PVA. Normal kids' PVA glue. Mix them together, and then I add a good, a good uh, half a cup of water, just to tin it out slightly. And that's a lovely primer for these canvases. And once it's dry, give it two coats. Once it's dry, give it a very light sand with some very fine sandpaper. Okay, very lightly, and it's beautiful and smooth. 
And the thing about it is the paint doesn't sit too long on the canvas wet. It kind of over a period of maybe three or four hours it kind of dries lovely into the canvas and it doesn't stay wet for too long if you understand what I mean. So that's why I like using my own one. I've tried the gessos and they work fine as well. It's pretty much a, a, a pretty much like a gesso. That's how I would describe it. Um, but this, the way I do this, it just works out far, far cheaper for me because I'm a cheapskate and I just can't afford to be buying tubs and tubs of gesso in the art store. So I just make my own and it's perfectly fine. It'll do the job just well, just as well as any other primer out there. Okay, that's looking like a nice soft pale background now, isn't it? Um, so well, I might come down just a little bit more here. On top of this, now on top of this wet paint, this is all wet. I'm going to put my trees, and the reason I like working wet into wet like this is because when I start putting my dark grey on here, it's going to mix with that light blue that's on the canvas and create different tones and different effects. So it'll get lighter and lighter. I'll show you what I mean. I want to make, make a nice dark, nice medium grey for those trees. Because I'm going to be putting some snow on the trees. So I'm going to start off with a nice rich kind of a grey. Okay? Ivory black and some white. Sounds easy enough, doesn't it? Okay? Two colours. I can't make it much easier than that. Black and white. Let's start, and I'm going to come down at a side angle with these. Um, I'll go over to the middle. And just using this brush and dabbing it like so. Up and down, create the tops of those trees. And look at that. We have a row of trees off in the distance, beginning to appear. This is a nice, quick and easy way of creating some trees in the distance. All right, let's go back in more paint. Just dab, 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 all the way along. And I'm pretty much just using paint on its own now. There's no thinners in this. Dab, 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 dab. It doesn't get much easier than that, does it? Let's be honest. And bring them off over here. Just like so. Now, you don't want it all to look exactly the same. So, you know, a bit of up and down here and there. It looks all right. I might go a bit higher with that, actually, just a little. And it's almost disappearing into the sky there, you see? That's a nice little effect. Um, okay, let's get a bit darker. Let's take a touch of black and I'm gonna take a touch of burnt umber. And that'll warm the gray slightly and give it more depth. So I didn't really mix them, I'm mixing them on the canvas. So you can see what I mean. There we go, just dab, dab, dab. Up and down, up and down, all the way along, see? That will do fine. Um, so I want a, a dark background here, you see, for those uh, birch trees coming up because they are nice. I'm going to make them nice and bright. In fact, I'll make them probably brighter than what they are on the picture. So I want a nice dark background behind those trees and they'll stand out really nice then, don't you think? And we can even go up here with a couple as well, look. Nice row of trees off up there. And what I might even do is put some little stalks in. So we could assume that there is some bark, um, some tree trunks showing through. And there is on the photograph, you can see. So let's just take a little bit of white and a touch of Naples yellow. You could just use white on its own. But I'd like to add a touch of Naples yellow in with this, just to warm it slightly. Now, so let's just go along and put a couple of flicks of tree trunks 
just off there in that distance, you see? Don't be too fussy about it, just a couple of straight flicks with the brush. Just here and there. And it just really it kind of adds a bit of interest to the painting, that's all. I know the focus is on the birch trees themselves, but this just adds a bit of interest into the background. That's all I'd say. Okay, that'll do. And now, I'm going to start putting some um, snow on these trees. Now, I could use this, but I think I might switch to another brush. We'll try something else. Let me get my brushes here. Now, what could we try? Um, you see, we have a huge selection. I think I could use a fan brush. That might get, not get the effect I'm after. Let's try. Um, I think I'll. Try, oh, this is a bit too too clean for me. Hmm. You see the dilemma. So much choice. I'll try this. Yes, I think I'll try this. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Simple synthetic brush. Okay. Very standard, simple, cheap, synthetic. Let's pick up some white with this. I'm not going to wet this because the canvas is very wet, so we don't need any thinners on this. If I go onto this with a wet brush, it'll just end up like a mess. So it's thick over thin. Do you understand? Thin colours first, and then thick paint on top of that. Let's take some white with this. Okay, and I'm doing this now in such a way that the bristles are open. Okay, it's not coming to a point. Nice open bristles. And let's just start putting some snow here and there. Okay, let's try it. And I'm kind of using, it's kind of difficult to explain. Now I'm using the corner of the brush. So I'm kind of dabbing with the corner of the brush. And I have the brush pointing down at an angle as well. And that's creating the direction of the foliage on the tree. So it's giving the tree that outline. Okay, load up again. We could get some trees in the front here. So you could just hold it and dab it upright as well like this, you see? This is only just giving the impression of kind of trees and bushes off in the distance, that's all. Now when it starts getting dirty, just give it a wipe on some tissue. Quick wipe and back into your white again. And I'm trying to be as easy as I can with this and to keep this as simple as I possibly can for all you out there, all you eager painters. There we go. And dry the brush again. And I think I'll come down here and do some of this on those. I've been very subtle now because of these ones off in the distance. I'm not going to go crazy with those because they are way, way off in the distance and you can only see a hint of the foliage on them. So, that'll do. That'll do absolutely fine. I don't see anything now at all wrong with that. Now, we could use the same brush. Let's put in a nice light colour here. I'm dampening the brush a little because again I'm going on to dry canvas so I want to dampen it just ever so slightly and it's pretty much white and a touch of blue only just the slightest little touch and I'm going to go up and create a nice edge under those okay see little wiggle Don't try and make it completely straight because to make it look natural there's going to be little bumps and humps every here and there. So a couple of little bumps here and there you see. And just cover your canvas just nice and quickly with that colour. So 
let me get some more white so as I was saying thank you very very much for all the support that you're giving me it really makes my tutorials a pleasure when I know that people are getting uh, tips and getting encouragement from them it really does help um, and believe it or not you're giving me encouragement as well with your lovely comments so um, I appreciate it I really do and the support is basically just to help me with materials that type of thing so I can keep on with these wonderful tutorials getting better and better and better and learning new ways of showing you how I paint um, and you know it's all it's all for your benefit everyone it's for your benefit because I really want to teach people how to paint and I really want to teach people that you don't have to be afraid to try it it's much easier than you think now I just picked up a little bit of this dark grey here just for the front here so yeah do try it don't be shy pick up your brush and just go for it now I want to create some nice light on the snow alright would that look nice so let me just switch brushes I'll get a slightly flatter brush okay and I'm just going to come along here and what I'm going to do is I just dampened it and dried it again so it's pretty dry now it's more or less dry touch of Naples yellow some white and a touch of red and that will give a nice colour for say imagining the sun hitting that snow so it's giving the snow that little glow from the sun am I doing it on one side just on one side now be very careful don't make it too dark and that'll do fine you can see it does it kind of brightens the snow just that little little bit so that's it we can move on now to our birch trees um so what i will do actually i'm just looking at there and that's what happens when you paint you see something catches your eye I'm just going to take a little touch of burnt umber with that black and I'm going to give those tree trunks just a little shadow just here and there so the birch trees let's have a go at these I'm going to start off with you could use a flat brush or a round brush um, hmm I don't know it doesn't matter really does it let's just try a flat brush let's go for it okay white let's take some white a dry brush again lots of white um there is a very bright highlight on them which i can hit with my brush in a minute i'll just take some white for now okay plain white on its own nice and easy that's an easy thing to do and let's start at the bottom um i'm not going to copy them exactly i'm going to just kind of go my own way from here let's take one here and let's just bring it up it's picking up the color there but that's fine again I'll clean my brush and pick up some more fresh color um, you can leave the background dry if you like if that makes it easier for you do that and let's bring one up like that um, I'll do another one next to it I want to just I want to leave um these thick branches with the I want to do those with the round brush so I can get some nice little flicks on them you see now let's just widen that at the bottom that's one trunk done let's move over here and do another one and we we'll go behind this and we come off at a slight angle here with this one come out of the painting So you can see just be free have a bit of fun with this there is no rule to this you can make it whatever you want um, they don't have to be birch trees they could be different kinds of trees I'm going to put that down and switch to a round brush just so that I can get um, better kind of brush strokes if you know what I mean 
rather than using a flat brush all the time. Let me just find a nice round brush here now. Yeah, that'll do fine. Okay, let's just get some white. And they look very similar, don't they? So let's just change them up a little bit. Okay, let's come off of this one with one like that. I'm going to come off of this one with one like that. So, very, very free now. Just remember, it's, it's, a shaky hand is perfect for this kind of painting. If your hands shake a lot, um, all the better for this. I'm using nice thick paint now for all of this. I'm not going to do some of the branches until later because they can come over the darks. I have some darks to put in here next. Um, so I'll leave some branches until later. So let's just crawl along now as if we were painting an ordinary tree with this lovely white colour. And then let's I will now get some dark colour. So I'm going to put these down and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to mix a dark colour with my knife. In fact what I'll do is I'll mix it with the brush first and I'll pick it up with the knife then. So I'm going to just take some black and some brown. That's it, nice simple colour, black and brown. So I have that mixed, then pick up your painting knife. I shall use... Hmm. Well, it appears I've lost... Oh no, I haven't. Here it is. Something with a nice sharp edge. Nice sharp painting knife, okay? Let's pick up some of that colour. In fact, I'm going to go more brown into this. Just on the very, very edge, a little tiny roll of paint. Can you see that? A little roll of paint just there. And on the left hand side, let's imagine the shadows on the left. I'm just going to dab that along the edge. Here and there. Like so. Let's go up on to the thick branches as well. And I'm sure you've probably seen and many artists do it this way. I just think it's the nicest and easiest way of creating um, bark on a tree. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. And then I'm going to take a fan brush. Or you can use a little flat brush if you like, whichever is easier for you. And I'm just going to basically flick this in with a little curve. All right? So I'm going to pull that dark color into the bright color, creating a little curve as I go. Watch now. Did you see that? And I'm just doing it here. Now my fan brush is not the best. It's fairly well worn, worn I'll be honest. But this is generally how you could create a bark on a birch tree. And there's going to be other little dark spots on it as well, which we'll do in a sec. Just let me create the curve. I'm getting the curvature first of the tree. Okay, there we go. So we have some nice bark, well, a suggestion of some bark on the tree. Can you see that? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small brush, I'll take a small little pointy brush, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to just sit this on the floor. So I'm going to take some of the dark paint with my pointy brush, and I'm just going to create some roots kind of coming out at the bottom of that tree okay just pulling them down and flicking them across and that helps sit it down doesn't it rather than having them kind of floating in midair so that's just a nice little touch to help them sit on the floor okay 
Now next I'm going to do the shadow. I'm going to mix a nice shadow colour now. And I will take a hmm, small white brush that I had, a small flat brush with the white on it. And I'm going to take some white. I'll take some blue. I'll take a touch of red. And how about a touch of black? So a nice cool grey for a shadow. That's a little bit on the red side, so let's take some more black and blue. Ah, that's better. And pull that shadow away from the trees. And I'm softening the shadow up into the tree then, so it's kind of disappearing. Do you understand? So you can tell where the, tre where the tree stops and the shadow begins. Now, I'm taking a bit more black, just at the bottom of that. I'm going to dab it into that shadow. And this is just kind of creating some texture, if anything else. So immediately we have um, life in the painting because there's a shadow there. It tells you where the light is and it really kind of draws you into the painting, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to switch to my small brush now. And I'm going to start putting some darks on the branches because we can't forget about the branches. They need to have some darks as well, don't they? So some black and some brown again. We could even just use burnt umber for this. But I'm just going to put some little shadows here and there on those branches. And we could even have one or two kind of cutting in front of a tree, you see? Just like that. And that then helps push one tree behind the other, doesn't it? And this is a lovely way to paint. So we just take our time, going along, practicing, seeing what happens. And it really is a joy just to sit down, spend an afternoon doing this at your own pace. And you will be amazed at the results. You really, really will. So let's take another one over here, look. So we're just using black now for this. And I'm just wiggling the tip of the brush here and there. That's all I'm doing, nice and easy. Again, the shaky hands. What do they say about the shaky hands? They're your friend. So I'll just carry on doing this. Nice and easy, chilled out. I'm a very kind of a chilled out guy anyway, I'll be honest. It takes a lot now really to, to really make me angry and cross. I just don't, I don't take much notice of negativity and I like to be happy and cheerful kind of a guy. I like to take life as it comes, not be serious, make the most of it. And, uh, Respect people around you, that's all. Right. So, going nicely with that now. now. I'm going to take some of that black and brown. And I'm just going to put a suggestion of some marks in the tree. Just like this. Some little flicks here and there. Because the birch tree does have these little flanges from where the old bark has kind of fallen off, or where the old branches have come off, I think. I could be wrong now, please correct me on this. It's just little, a series of little marks, that's all. Very simple, okay? Look very, very fast. I'm gonna wash my brush, and I wanna get some nice bright 
nice real bright ones on there so i'm going to take some white plenty of it some naples yellow and this should give us a nice vibrant white and this may be a little tricky now because i'm working wet into wet but you can leave it dry if you like and come back to it but i just i don't know what it is maybe i don't have the patience but i just i like putting wet paint on top of wet paint And this could even be a suggestion of snow on some of the branches. It's just basically a couple of dabs here and there. And it just gives it a bit of texture, doesn't it? And we come down here and we suggest some on the roots as well. And look, we can even put some in across on the snow here to suggest some. So let's just have a quick look at this now and see how this looks. Right, what I might do is put maybe a little fence off in the distance just to balance the painting because the, at the moment when I'm looking at this, everything is more or less on the left. Might be nice to have something here just on the right, just, just to complement it. So let's try a little fence. Let's take some brown. So it's just some burnt down burnt, nothing else. And let's put a little fence off in the distance here. Um, let me see. Let's put it fairly far off. And again, it's going to be a rickety old thing, so it's falling apart. There we go. And let's put a little impression of a little bit of wire between each of these. This one's falling down because it's broken. Some guy want to come along and fix it, wouldn't he? Okay, like that. And let's take a touch of white. And let's put a hint of snow on the top of those. So by doing that, then we're creating the highlight as well. There we are. Now, what are we missing from that? What do we need to really bring it to life? Yes, a shadow. You are completely right. Let's make a nice little grey for this. Now, in fact, I'll use more black in this. So, a nice warm grey again. And let's just pull the shadow off of those. You see? They don't all have to go in the same direction. They can be wiggly and all sorts of stuff. And you can even go so far as to soften them in with your finger like so. So they disappear into that snow. And now we have some shadow, we have a bit of life in the painting. Now I'm going to go along with some black and some brown. And I'm going to add some more twigs and things like that to the tree. And these would be ones that are kind of in the shadows, if you know what I mean. So that's why I'm doing them this colour. So we're kind of hidden amongst the shadows. You could put little flicks of white on some of these if you wish. It's absolutely fine. Um, I'm just kind of giving you a quick tutorial, just a very rough kind of a tutorial on how I would paint um, a birch tree in a landscape. And darken that down at the end here. Let's just go for it.
and this is this would be a nice paint now just to practice kind of warm greys warm and cool greys this would be ideal in fact for that um, what you could do actually and do you know something else what you could do you could just take some white on your palette knife and do the same the opposite way okay let's try that see what happens see we're trying different things okay let's take our fan brush give it a quick clean and pull these the opposite way now let's see what happens with this there that helped brighten that side a little bit didn't it And that is it. One more thing, you cannot forget our little friend up here. A single bird flying across a wintry landscape. Isn't that just lovely? So you could maybe add some little bits of grasses to this or something if you wanted to. You could darken the shadows. Uh, it's entirely up to yourself. But yeah, that's... Um, I would say that's that's a nice little painting isn't it now i do have a frame for this i do have a frame so let me put a frame on this just to show you what it might look like when it's framed now let me just take off the camera for a sec and i'll go in closer for you so you can see so you can see a nice birch tree it's very rough now i would take my time uh, possibly fix some of the branches do a little bit more to it, but not a whole lot, really. It was a bit of fun. Nice little shadows on our um, posts over there. So that is it. Um, again, I'll zoom back around to my colours for you. I'll show you. Well, lovely mixes there, aren't they? Nice and simple, with just a handful of colours. So let's see if I got a frame. I should have a frame. Ah, there it is. And these are all my own handmade frames. Okay, let me show you the back all taped up um, there's a lot of work on these frames now everyone a heck of a lot let's just slip this over this and show you what it looks like don't you have the scissors there to cut that out you know what I'll do you know what I'll do let's just slip the painting into it okay and see what see what it looks like now be careful not to scratch it there we go and this is in everyone let's swing it around and have a look and there we are isn't that lovely lovely simple winter scene with some birch trees So there we go. Let me put this down here a sec and I can turn the camera. And that's it. I'm sweating. I'm inside my studio. It's roasting hot outside. Um, there's no windows here. I have to buy windows for my studio and open them up, uh, leaving some fresh air. So I, I, I hope you enjoyed that uh, quick lesson. Just a very, very quick lesson. Um, just on color mixing and just basically practice with different colors. Um, but for me I tend to keep everything nice and soft and earthy natural um, you can you're probably the type, you could be the type of artist who likes using very rich strong dark colors um, and that's fine that's just the way I like to, to mix so I hope you've got some hints and some advice from that that you can try at least and uh, thank you again for your support thank you very much um, I have another scene coming up very quickly. In fact, I will probably start painting it today. Um, it's a lovely nighttime scene of Cork City. Um, so it's some lovely night lights shining on buildings, that type of thing. And there's even a ferris wheel in it as well. So I hope you'll enjoy that. It's coming up in the next uh, two to three days. I should have it finished. Um, so yeah, give me a like, subscribe. 
and uh, I hope you can support me and uh, I, I, I hope you're enjoying my tutorials and getting some encouragement from them because it's, it's not difficult, just try it. Get your paints and try. It's only paint, okay? It's only paint. So uh, until the next time, I shall see you again and uh, happy painting. Goodbye.